Hello, my viewers, and welcome back to our channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, then please do so by tapping on the subscribe button and turning on your notification bell so that you don't have to miss on any of our interesting videos. Now, I will come here to some breaking news out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where a recount of over 30,000 votes is underway due to machine issues. Now, this development has sparked intense speculation with many wondering if the outcome could change the course of history. Now, some are even suggesting that Kamala Harris might have actually won, leaving many to question the initial results. But that's not all. Rumors are swelling about Elon Musk's involvement in this saga, adding another layer of of intrigue to an already complex situation and if that weren't enough the state of pennsylvania is also facing a recount leaving many to wonder what other surprises might be in store so with that said let's check out these videos as different people share more information on this i will be right back hi i'm elo musa with cbc news and i'm in milwaukee's central count location it's one of many across wisconsin where absentee ballots are being counted but there was a bit of controversy today, and that's because 31,000 ballots had to be recounted. They had to start all over again because of an issue with that machine. That is a tabulation machine, and officials say they weren't being closed properly. So they had to start all over again. They said they did it out of an abundance of caution and because of transparency. However, some Republicans are already raising concerns about the process. Trump lost in Wisconsin in 2020 by a mere 20,000 votes. So a recount of 31,000 to some is quite significant. A recount is in the works, folks, because Kamala Harris left us a breadcrumb. If you go onto Kamala's campaign donation page, here she is, and then she talks about her concession. But if you go on her donations page, Right up here in the highlighted area, it now says that the donated money will be allocated to Harris for the president's recount account. Even the Wall Street Journal noticed it. I don't know if any of y'all have noticed, but on Truth Social, Trump has been very quiet. Sure, he's like re-truthed some things and, and shared some memes and stuff, but he really hasn't said much. In fact, yesterday was the first time he actually even made a statement on truth. And weirdly enough, it had nothing to do with the election or anything. It was all about truth social and saying that there are room. Uh, it's stupid. Read it. But what he posted today is what's interesting. Again, this is the only the second thing that he said since he's won one in this he accuses the democratic party of being squeezed by vendors that they can't pay yeah i know and now for the first time i think ever since he's come into the political stadium he's saying that we should all have unity and we should help the democrats through this difficult period also he got the year of the election wrong for the record but here's the thing y'all trump knows that there is an investigation going on under the surface just because we aren't storming any capitals, those of us that actually understand how elections work understand that the numbers aren't numbering. She's a fighter. They are gathering the proof before they come out and accuse the election of being stolen. We're going to start hearing the whispers soon, if not by the end of the month, maybe the end of the week. Okay, you guys, so I've been doing my own um, recount and tallying on, of the polls at my work desk and, and on my sticky note. As soon as I finish carrying the one and subtracting some other things, I'll get back to y'all because I really do think she did win. A recount for the 2024 election is not only a completely valid thing to want, but if you're against it, that's kind of suspicious. Let me explain. So you've got the CEO of Smooth Brainland over here telling up talking about how Elon Musk knew that knew what the result of the election was four hours early. Suspicious. This is the same election in which we've had ballot boxes being set on fire in swing states by, let's be perfectly honest, it was not Democrats. It's not Democrats who engage in that kind of behavior. And most suspicious of all, you've got Trump at his rallies before the election, unable to keep his big mouth shut, talking about his little secret with House Republicans. Meanwhile, you've got right-wing-led efforts to challenge the ability of uh, citizens living outside the United States to cast their ballots as well. People are having trouble with that. After the 2020 election, Trump said, oh, well, this was a rigged election. Frankly, we won this election with absolutely no evidence and drove all of these people to commit to questioning every election ever, as long as it's not one that they win. Right? And I don't want to continue this trend of challenging every election just it's not the result you want. But look at all these little tells and hints and slip ups that they're making. Clearly, there's something going on and something does need to be investigated. Absolutely. Especially when taken into account that Elon Musk, a key figure in all of this, who somehow knew the election results four hours early, has been found to be, be in consistent contact with Putin. Like, seriously, are we, are we not concerned? Are we not concerned? I'm concerned. Here we go. The great state of Pennsylvania faces a recount. 
Okay, so this is a state mandated recount, but you can see how close the margins were, but this is where people are calling this sketchy. The Department of State says there's an estimated about 60,000 uncounted provisional ballots and about 20,000 uncounted mail-in absentee ballots. That 80,521 total includes all ballots for which county boards of elections have not yet made a final resolution regarding the validity or el eligibility to be counted. Pretty much what I'm trying to say is don't be surprised if all of a sudden we see a random flip to a blue senator in the state of Pennsylvania. Make sure to follow my account for more updates because I'm sure we're about to see some drama once again in Pennsylvania. You're probably keeping up with the American election right now, but did you hear what happened in BC's? And I know what you're thinking, isn't that already kind of done? Elections BC has announced that in the Surrey-Guilford riding, the BC NDP's lead has shrunk from 27 votes to 21 votes. So how did this happen? Turns out some votes were either missing or miscounted. And if you're wondering why that small difference is important, the BC NDP's majority hangs in the balance of that riding. Keep an eye out for the judicial recount this week, which is November 7th and 8th. Do you think they would let you know if they lost your vote? Time for a quick election update. G'day all. As you will know, on Friday last week, the Victorian Electoral Commission made the formal count uh, determination of who would be uh, the winners of all the different wards in Hume City Council. Uh, and those who have been paying attention to my page will know that um, I was listed as a successful candidate uh, on Friday last week. Now, of course, that was by a slim margin, less than 10 votes. Uh, and so, understandably, uh, my opponent has asked for a recount um, of the ballots to the Electoral Commission, which they have granted. And now, about 40 minutes ago, the Electoral Commission shared their plans for this recount to occur. It's happening tomorrow um, in Springvale, of all places, so I'm a bit disappointed in that. I think that's not the best outcome for democracy, to make it so far away from home and from Sunbury, but that is the uh, reality that the Commission gets to decide these things. Uh, and so, about this time tomorrow, we will have the final result of this Hume City Council election and for the people of Sunbury as well. So uh, thank you to all the people who have uh, passed on their warm wishes and their congratulations for the provisional results. Um, I'm looking forward to this review and this recount and I'm sure it will return uh, the same result uh, the first count did on Friday last week and that I'll continue to have the honour of representing this amazing community uh, that I love and that I call home. Cheers team. Now, election officials in Milwaukee are recounting more than 30,000 absentee ballots because those on the ballot tabulators were not properly sealed. The recounting was being done out of an abundance of caution, said Melissa Howard, spokesperson for the Milwaukee Election Commission. There was no reason to believe that any ballots already counted had been tampered with, she said. Now, she said they were taking the step of recounting all the ballots in an effort to be completely, fully transparent. The problem was due to human error, she said. The decision would delay the reporting of about 105,000 absentee ballots that could determine whether Vice President Kamala Harris or Donald Trump wins Wisconsin. Now, still on the same, the incredibly tight Pennsylvania race between Democratic Senate Bob, Bob Cassie and Republican challenger Dave McCormick will head to a recount. Now, Pennsylvania Secretary of the Commonwealth announced Wednesday, while provisional and mail ballots are still being counted, an official results show the race to be within the one half of one percent margin to automatically trigger a recount under state law. Currently, McCormick leads Cassie by less than 30,000 votes, an advantage that has shrunk since election night. Now, CNN has not made a projection in the race, although McCormick, a former Hage fund executive who lost a bid for the Senate GOP nomination in 2022, attended new senator orientation in Washington, D.C. this week. Now, CNN has projected that Republicans will win the U.S. Senate majority and retain the House majority, which means that with control of the White House, the GOP will complete a sweep of the federal government while the Pennsylvania race is still to be declared. Republicans will have at least 52 seats in the the Senate. Now, Pennsylvania counties will be required to start the recount by November 20. They must complete the recount by November 26 and report results to the state by the next day. While McCormick claimed victory last week, Cassie, a three-term incumbent, 
has not conceded and told reporters at the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday that there are more votes to count in the race. When the vote gets to a certain level, the states makes a determination. They made the determination, he said, so a lot more votes to count. Now, CNN previously ranked the Pennsylvania seat as one of the 10 most likely to flip in 2024, while Vice President Kamala Harris lost all seven swing states to President-elect Donald Trump, Democratic Senate candidates narrowly held Wisconsin and Navida along with open seats in Michigan and Arizona. Meanwhile, the GOP has flipped three Senate seats, toppling Democratic incumbents John Tester of Montana and Sherrod Brown of Ohio and winning retiring independent St. Joe Manchin's West Virginia seat. A victory for McCormick could make Pennsylvania a pivotal battleground one of the few states with senators from different parties for at least four years. Now, Democratic Senator John Fetterman beat Mehmet Oz, the firm television doctor, in 2022 for his first six-year term. During the campaign, Democrats tried to paint McCormick as an extremist on unaliving of unborn babies and called out him trips back to Connecticut, where his school-aged daughter lives and business background. Now, he made an anti incumbency argument against Cassie, calling the senator a career politician and asking voters in one of his closing messages to make a change. These are the latest updates, but what do my viewers have to say? Share your thoughts as well in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in my next as we bring you another interesting video.